Hey there, how is everybody doing? Hi, welcome back to my weekly Facebook live show. I'm Jen Burson. I'm the founder of Generation PR, and I am the host of the uh, Pitching Powerhouse podcast and the creator of the Profitable PR Pros group where you might be watching this Facebook live. So welcome, and we are going to chat today all about running your agency. And it's one of those, if I would have known then what I know now type of moments, I feel like I may not be live. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna go online. If you're watching the replay, like skip ahead two minutes. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Very peculiar. Hold on. Okay. Hi. Okay. Now I see that I am live. It took a second. Um, how's it going? Uh, welcome. Okay. Now that I know we're live and happening, let me know who's here. I can see. I can see your comments. Um, so welcome to the weekly Facebook Live show. I'm Jen Burson. I host a podcast. Thanks, Serena. Blech. I host a podcast called Pitching Powerhouse. I run an agency called Generation PR. And I'm the founder of the brand Generation, which is a platform for um, promoting your brand if you're coming to my agency or helping you achieve your biggest goals in your business. If you are an agency owner like Jane and Serena who are in my programs, I hear the dog barking. I had her in the room with the cats. Bad idea, I know, Jane. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, I'm gonna type it here. Um, I have to just let Lola out. The cats I think are terrorizing her. Hold on one second. <laughs> Jane, these kitties are so freaking cute. They're as tiny as can be, and they're like sweet and they cuddle and they love each other. If they're separated, like I separate them to eat, they meow to be back with the other. We named them, um, we, what do we name them? Oh my gosh, we've named them so many different things. Uh, the little girl is Callie, and the little boy is Leon after um, our favorite character in Curb Your Enthusiasm. They're so cute. Jane, I'm gonna send you a video of Callie like going after a fly this morning and she ended up jumping and landing on my curtains in my bedroom and she's just like hanging there stuck. Reminds me of one of those inspirational posters that's like just hang in there and there's a cat just hanging from the curtains. That was my kitty this morning. They're very cute and they're teeny tiny, like less than two pounds. I swear they're tiny and you can't tell by the pictures or video because they look like normal sized cats, but they're like itty bitty. Anyway, um, so this is going to be one of those fun conversations. I love this kind of thing of like, if I only knew then what I know now, you know, what would I have done differently or I could have had X results faster, you know, that sort of talk and I like all that talk because that's what we're here for. I was just listening to a podcast, The Impact Theory with Tom Bilyeu and he was interviewing someone and they were talking about their drive for excellence and one of his guests was driven to excellence because he just wanted to make more money than his father. That was it. That was what was motivating him and he kind of said something along the lines of now this generation it's so much easier to be successful and make more money and make it faster because of those who went before us 
and are now sharing their expertise and giving us the ins and outs, the blueprint for how they did it. And it was interesting because I was like, that's really aligned with what my chat topic is for today. If you could start your agency over again, what would you change, if anything? And, you know, I wouldn't change much, but I think that there are some things that could be optimized, streamlined, learned earlier, all of that. So we're gonna talk about that. And as I'm sharing, I have people on here that are all different levels. And I talk to people, you guys know, all over the world, it's like one of my favorite things. And they're just starting out. I just connected with a wonderful woman who is graduating with a master's degree in PR and is going to jump right in and start her own thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I got you, you know. Um, and it's just interesting to hear everybody at all different levels, but we all have the same goal. We want to build a business we love. We want to build a business that is sustainable. We want to love the work we do. We want to be excited to go to work every day. So whether you're, you know, like Jane, Serena, me, where you've been, well, Serena is a new agency owner, new ish the last few years. And Jane's been working in PR for years, like I have. Um, there's always something to learn and there's something to share. So as I'm sharing you guys, please feel free. I would love to hear any of these, um, you know, kind of takeaways that you learned, okay? So I will stand by leaving law 17 years ago to start my agency generation as the best thing, the best decision that I've ever made, um, you know, professionally, like, marrying Kevin and having our children and made a lot of like, you know, choices that I stand behind that are great. But leaping into PR with no experience, when I tell you guys no experience, no contacts, that's what I did. And so that's an alternative path to getting a degree or working at an agency and coming up through the ranks, which is awesome. But that was the only way. And through our educational platform, Generation Academy, and all of our programs, and everything we have available to you, we're shifting the paradigm and saying there is another way to do this. So I know it's possible to be successful with a different path because I did it without having contacts or experience. I know that sounds crazy, but I learned by doing and I've learned so much over the last more than 17 years. There are a few things that I probably would have done differently if I were starting from scratch all over again. So I have seven things that I would do differently if I was just beginning my journey as an agency owner now. Okay. Number one is I would be more selective about the kinds of clients that I worked with and not be afraid to turn down opportunities. So this is saying no to things that don't align with your goals, your business, your interests, your ultimate um, niches that you wanna be a part of. I have like hair stuck to me. Um, with all the dogs and cats, there's like fur everywhere. So I want you to like think about all the times that you've had a friend or a coworker or some random connection like college roommate's cousin, you know, it's like always these randos, like, hey, you do PR, <laughs> where they reached out with a great opportunity for you to support their business. And all of those little side things that you do because some money is better than none or so-and-so needs your help, so you're going to have to help them out. You guys have heard me say this, they are stepping stones down a path in the wrong direction. Just go down the wrong direction. And we know now that all of the work that we do, all the experience, all of the contacts we make are all building our business, our expertise, the results we can get, and represent what's possible for other clients that come our way. So you don't wanna just take those things for the sake of getting a retainer. Why, you know, if you're not passionate and excited about something, you can't be as effective um, to represent a client. I. I'm sorry, but if you don't believe in it, you're not passionate about it, I feel that what we are doing is a lot, a lot is very much aligned with sales. 
and you have to believe in it. You have to believe in the results, the outcome, the product, the quality, the cool factor, whatever it is, if you're gonna be that client's representative. You have to have a genuine passion for the company you're representing in order to be as successful as you can be for yourself and for them and enjoy the work that you're doing, which I feel is very important as an agency owner. I think that we need to build businesses that we actually enjoy working on. Notice I didn't say working in. <laughs> I think that's coming. Um, so uh, that's, that's number one is have a genuine passion. And two, if you don't love it, if you're going to quickly level up your retainers and the caliber of clients that you work with, you have to niche down. You niche down to grow your retainers and your client base. You don't have to commit to a niche right out of the gate, so I don't want that to scare you. You can definitely try different things and see what you like, see what resonates, um, what you're getting great results in. But if you're just taking a client for a paycheck and you know that you're not going to be working in that particular industry long term, you're gonna get stuck. So you're, think about it, you're going down a path where you're making media contacts, you're pitching probably contacts that you don't have any prior relationship with, probably an industry that you don't really have a lot of expertise or knowledge about. You wanna go deep, right? Like Jane is a beauty expert, like a true, true beauty expert. And like me, she's passionate about beauty. She loves it, you know? My girl gets a new compact or a new uh, a new palette, eyeshadow palette. We're, it's like we're a new woman, right? Um, oh, Jane, I haven't, did you send the, those samples? I know I'm like looking for it. Um, I haven't gotten anything. Let me know where I should be looking if they went out or not, but I'm so excited to try. Um, when you have an expertise like Jane, billion dollar companies come to you for support. They're not gonna come to you if you're a generalist. If you serve all people, you do all things, you're not gonna attract the premium clients who can pay a retainer that's a lot higher for the expertise that they need. Oh, okay, ah, that's okay. No, 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 don't, don't go out of your, I, yeah. I just wanna make sure I wasn't missing it. Um, so the results also that you get for your clients, you leverage them to get bigger clients and put yourself out there showing the kind of results you get. So when you get results for these types of clients, it doesn't matter long term. And in fact, it's going to draw in more of what you don't want to do. So you have to think of like think about it like this. What are you eating? Uh-oh. What is this? Oh, Lola. Oh, gee. Oh, my God. Lola. <laughs> New cat toy, which I believe is filled with catnip. And she's just shredded the whole thing. Oh, God. What are you doing? Um crazy dog. So you go down a path, you're going to draw on more of the work that you don't love. And that is not going to be a good effective use of your time and get you to ramp up quickly. So I remember early on, I got a call from somebody who was like a friend's cousin out of Tennessee, something like that. And she had a denim brand. And I was like, okay. And I did not like working with apparel. Um, yeah. Oh, awesome, Ashley. Nice to see you. It's been a little while. Um, Ashley says, I feel so much more focused and hopeful now that I decided to niche down in crisis management. I have another member of our community who just also decided to um, niche down to crisis comms. So uh, Kelly, um, you have to reach out to Kelly um, if she's on here. Aw, Angela, why do you envy Ashley? Are you still trying to niche down? And if you are, what's going on? And if you are, come here. Are you in the agency accelerator? Because we really help you niche down. There's a whole process to it. You know, we're telling stories. Like you have to put forward the best, the best case. This dog is antsy. I just took her for an hour long walk in the hills. And she's still going nuts. Okay, so 
Angela, let me know because we can help you with that. That's a lot of what we start with in the strategy pillar in my agent, agency accelerator. That's like the first pillar. Um, the second thing, so we're not gonna, we're gonna niche down, become experts, don't take everything that comes your way um, and think about it just because you offer a service does not mean that every single person interested in that service gets to work with you because that's going to send you down the wrong path. I'm just looking for a bone. You guys, I'm so sorry. This is a, it's a little more challenging because she is interested in the cats. I got two new little kittens that are adorable. Um, and so I had to lock them up and now she's like, let me in. What are you doing? Um, oh, I think she wants the catnip anyway. Okay. So number two, I would not get so stuck on branding and how things look and being perfect and having it be beautiful. Um, Angela is saying, um, I do fitness and beauty and a lot of influencer marketing, but I've always found crisis to be intriguing. Awesome. There are quite a few people in our community that do crisis comms. Um, and I actually had to use one for a friend. I just connected a friend to, um, oh yeah, no. Uh, yeah, crisis comms is kind of a 24-7, 365 thing. You gotta at least be on high alert. But there's always um, planning, the planning phase, which is where the bulk of your work comes in. It's not always like there's crises happening that you have to be on for. Chris Brogan has a great newsletter on branding today on LinkedIn. Oh, well, check it out. Um, and Elizabeth um, says, how do you figure out what to niche down to? Elizabeth, we um, talk a lot about it inside the Agency Accelerator, but I also have a little program called Lead to Landed. I think that's what it's called. Sorry. Um, that we do talk a lot about niching down, taking your background, your results, the things you love, where your contacts are. There's a lot that goes into it because we want you to be successful. Hi, Sasha. Your daughter is beautiful. I saw your... Um, post on Daughter's Day, beautiful daughter. So, okay, if you guys wanna see Chris Brogan's newsletter on branding on LinkedIn, check that out. But I would not get stuck on branding and I would just start doing the work. So that's number two. Oh, Ashley did lead to landed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a little quick, I'll just link it here because it's like literally a nothing, like um, you don't have to, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, I think it's like, $47 or something like that. I don't know. Um, let me just link it for you. So let me get back to branding. Give me one second. What do we have here for you? Pitch Lab, Lead to Landed. Okay. Um, what is it? Go get Lead to Landed. Um, it's on LinkedIn. Oh, it's $47. It's literally a no brainer. It's so good, I promise you, um, to give you that insight to figure that out for yourself. Okay, there's lead to landed. Um, and Elizabeth, you should buy it now and start doing it if that's a concern of yours. Like when I get off this call, I wanna see that you've enrolled. It's $47, it's a, no, it's a total no brainer. It's really good if you're struggling with niche, okay? It's there, all laid out for you. And you'll be, you'll feel better about the direction you're going in. You'll have a strategy behind it. Um, okay. Start doing the work. This is back to branding. Don't get stuck on it. Just start doing the work and be willing to put yourself out there even if your online presence isn't where you want it to be yet. Do as much as you can with what you have and don't allow that need for perfection. <laughs> Guilty. Um, and have perfect branding and a beautiful custom website, all of that. Don't let that stop you from making progress from moving forward and starting your business. All that stuff comes with time. When I talk about case studies, that comes with time. You can't put case studies on your website if you're brand new. What's gonna be on your website? Not a lot. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, you can have an information page. We used to call it a landing page, you know, with just your contact info. You basically just need an email address some way for people to connect with you and you can hit the ground running from there. And 
the other thing is that you tend to spend a lot of money on things like branding and a web presence in the beginning when you aren't fully sure the direction, the kind of clients you want to attract with your agency. So maybe you put out this brand identity that doesn't fit where you ultimately will end up and you spend a lot of money and a lot of time working on that and it may change quickly down the road. So your brand identity is gonna change many, many times. I think I've had 17 years, I think I've had five different brand identity look and feels, looks and feels, whatever that is. Um, and what I have tried to do is grow in the direction that I, it's not where I am, but where I wanna be so that there is some longevity to it. We're working on a rebrand right now. Um, and it's a totally different concept. I love my current branding, but it's kind of piecemeal, especially since we acquired PR Couture in March. So we're working on a big rebrand to encompass all of Generation, which is the agency, the educational platform, all of our programs, my podcast, YouTube, all the things, right? The umbrella. So we're a branded house, right? Like if you see all of the products that Google has, they all look like Google products because it has an identity, a look and a feel. Um, you know, we're a branded house, not a house of brands. A house of brands is like Procter & Gamble, right? But all the Procter & Gamble brands look totally different and they don't align and there's no cohesion really. Ours is gonna be a branded house where everything looks cohesive and you know exactly you know what company um, what you're getting the quality the caliber all of what we stand behind will all align but this is 17 years you guys and it'll probably be 18 years by the time i launch the new um, branded house so think about that it changes many times in the beginning you just need to start creating results contacts press wins. You don't need fancy branding to get results. And you can get your first few clients with personal relationships, networking, and over time, you can leverage those results to add to your website and create a beautiful presence that's reflective of the kind of business that you're building and the kind of clients that you want to retract, uh, attract but don't let that need for perfection keep you from just getting started gaining experience creating results and when you ultimately do build a website and create a brand don't think of where you are now think of what you're growing and you're going to grow into it because you don't want to quickly outgrow your branding and have it feel dated or have it feel you know, small or not like reflective of where you're headed. You want it to be where you're headed and have longevity for you. My first brand identity was like very girly. It was like the anti-lawyer. My, my law um, business cards were ECRU and it's a Jennifer Zankin, attorney at law in like a very boring print. And I ditched Jennifer, I'm Jen now, everybody calls me Jen. And I went completely the other way. I had a feminine silhouette of a girl holding a shopping bag and like a pink and blue poochy inspired pattern behind her. It was so girly. And I think it was my way of just being like, I'm not a lawyer anymore. That boring ecru is not Jen. That's Jennifer and she retired. <laughs> Jen has a fun business that's colorful and whimsical. And I had that branding for quite a few years and I had a very cool website um, that did not cost, I think I spent $900 on my first website and I had it for probably five years or, or more. So grow into it. Um, uh, <laughs> Angela, I have big branding visions, but very few skills in that area. Decided to keep it simple because I know I'm going to change my mind 45 billion blah, 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 blah times. I agree, simple is best. We're working on that right now. Um, and we started doing like a lot of exploring of other brands and iconic brands, and they're all very simple. <laughs> 
the more expensive their products are, the more simple their branding is. It's kind of interesting. Think of Chanel, right? Um, black and white, no colors, two C's, been that way forever. Iconic, iconic. I want to be iconic. So simple, and we're working on that, you know? Um, okay, so that's two. Hit the ground running and get results. That's what matters. Leverage your results. Don't try to make it perfect and beautiful right out of the gate. It's expensive and your mind's gonna change. Number three, I would stand up for myself and not let clients walk all over me. And I better start seeing those hearts and thumbs up that you not only agree, but that you're doing that, that you are standing up for yourself and not letting clients walk all over you tell you how to run your business. It took me a really long time to realize that one client does not make or break my business. You know, I love an anchor client. I think that's fantastic to have like an anchor client that you're known for, you grow together. I must be really delayed because I'm not seeing those hearts. You guys, please tell me you're not letting clients call the shots. I am live, there's quite a few of you here. Um, I know you got, there we go. Yeah, you're standing up for yourselves. Um, so one client I used to be, there we go. I must be really delayed. Um, I used to worry, hi, Alicia. Uh-huh, we know that you don't let anybody walk all over you. I used to worry that my very first paying client that I worked with for 11 years, that gave me um, the opportunity to establish an expertise and be known in the baby and kid space, I would worry that if I didn't have them, the narrative would be that they outgrew me and that were left in the dust, were no longer relevant. That was the narrative that I told myself, partially because the founder of the company kind of told me that. And in fact, she had some interesting, she called me at one point, ooh, a mosquito, ew. Um, she called me a tumbleweed in the corner, spinning around, collecting dust. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what does that even mean? Just basically that I'm, I'm a tumbleweed. Um, I'm dated and old and dusty. Hi, Francesca. Hi, Alyssa. Um, yeah, we don't let clients walk all over us. So I was so scared to lose that client that I was jumping. She'd say, jump, and I'd say, how high, when, I'll do it right now, ah, you know, with a newborn baby and all the things. Oh my God, it was so rude. There was a lot of gaslighting of like, you're amazing, you're the best, we wanna hire you to do X, Y, Z, but we don't wanna pay you any more money. Um, and I am like, but it's a new service and it costs money. Well, we don't need you. We can get anyone and we could, da, 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 da. I was just like, didn't you just tell me that I'm, it was just like a lot of gas. I didn't know the word gaslighting back then, but this was a gaslighting situation. Um, so took me a long time to realize that one client doesn't make or break my business. And if I have a client that is not being respectful, and this goes to my being respectful to my team, we don't tolerate that. We don't tolerate that. You get to choose how your business feels. You get to choose who gets access to you and who gets to work with you. Isn't that cool? That's why we're running our own businesses. Um, Alyssa says, I let them lead, it's bad. Uh, and then Ashley said, the only people who can walk all over me call me mom. I love it. I remember sending an email to a potential client saying that I was not willing to do something and I made, and I made my husband press send. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's really hard, but good for you, um, for doing that. Right. Um, uh, Alyssa, one client today asked you the ROI. What do you say to that? Um, hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna, there are so many mosquitoes and I'm so sick of it. I'm just gonna like spray myself. With, yes, I'm in my office, but the doors are all open. It's a trade off. Um, let me answer that at the end, Alyssa. I wanna just stay on this right now, but it's a, there's a lot. I think we talked about this. Didn't you and I talk about this? I just answered it. Why did I just answer this for where I can point you in the right direction? Honestly, it depends on their goals and what the um, outcomes are. 
<clears throat> Zero ROI from print advertising. Not shocking. What's, what are they measuring? What are they looking for? It's very hard to um, measure. Print advertising, you get impressions. <clears throat> That's it, circulation, right? That's the ROI because there's nothing, you can't connect it to any sales. You don't know where they're coming from. It's visibility. All you have is, yeah, but how does he know it's attributed to that print ad? That's what's so hard about advertising, print advertising. And PR is very similar. All you can really point to there is um, increase of traffic. Now with affiliate marketing, there's an opportunity for tracking that revenue. Um, anyway, so, Back to three, I would stand up for myself. I don't let clients walk all over me and you get to choose how your business feels. Clients get access to you. They get amazing access to you, right? And they get the ability to reach you directly, but you get to choose who you allow to have that access. And you're able to set boundaries as to when and how clients can contact you and your clients have to respect those boundaries. They have to. You know, it's, a, it's an equal, mutual relationship. <clears throat> yeah, it is apples to oranges. That's right. Um, so you're able to set boundaries as to when and how your clients contact you. They have to respect those boundaries. You have to set your own working hours. And for me, my nights and weekends are for my family and for myself. And so we set the precedent really early that we're not working during those hours. Like even if I am, I worked late last night because I had things I was excited about. Um, I don't hit send. I will schedule emails to go out in the morning because I don't want clients to think that I'm up working because that means that they think they can access me. So. I will return messages instantly during the workday, but on nights and weekends, it's waiting till the next working moment, you know, the next normal business hours. So you set that precedent that you're unreachable unless it's an emergency. And there's been a side discussion here with Angela and um, with Ashley about crisis comms and that's a difference if you are on a 24-hour news cycle and that's kind of the reason why i don't love social media then that's a trade-off that you're making but that doesn't mean clients access you like i said unless it's an emergency and with crisis comms that would probably be the makings the beginnings of an emergency so you have your boundaries clients need to follow them and when a client doesn't treat you with respect they don't get to work with you they don't get to have access to you they don't get to make you miserable and they don't get to make you feel crazy or insecure give me a heart or a thumbs up I know hearts weird but it's just letting me see if you've ever had a client that makes you feel crazy you're like is it me is this are, are they kidding I got a client on Ellen and it was bananas good like lights out amazing Ellen was like this is a favorite of Angelina Jolie and Gwen Stefani and Beyonce and they're the cutest things ever and rubbed her face on it it was so soft and it's so cuddly oh my god this is so great and I'm like oh my god this is the most amazing thing ever like on TV on Ellen for two solid minutes of screen time and her talking about premium a-list new mom celebrities and the client wasn't happy because the blankets on the table weren't folded the way she wanted. Are you fucking kidding me? Sorry, mom, I know you don't like the potty mouth, but like, I'm like, am I crazy? Is that me? Am I like, is this normal? It's not normal. So a lot of clients, yes, Angela, ugh, a lot of clients have these manipulation tactics that they use to get their service providers to over deliver right? It's this toxic client where they try to make you feel, <sighs> yeah, I know, Sasha, like, are you kidding me? They try to make you feel like you're on the razor's edge of being fired so they can keep your rate down and 
keep your effort in check. Like you want to just keep like, well, what am I going to do to win your affection? What am I going to do to make you happy? Give me a thumbs up if you've ever had a client like this. It sounds like Angela has. And if you haven't, good for you. Um, oh my God, it's crazy. And if you don't like how clients make you feel, then you don't have to work with them. And clients also don't get to tell you how you run your business. They don't get to dictate how you provide your services. Um, you know, Francesca, that's a good question. She says, do they do it on purpose or it's their nature? I think both. I think both because in this instance, I know. I know. Ellen should just be no brainer. No, it was like all bad. I was like, are you kidding me? Um, this particular person was like that in her personal life as well. Am I stepping on you? So it wasn't just professionally. Um, it was their personal life as well. I know that for a fact because I spoke to someone very close to them who also felt crazy. Um, yeah. Oh, Alyssa. Oh, that's such a bummer. Um, doing work you enjoy goes hand in hand with clients you truly enjoy and aren't temperamental. That's so right, Lily. I love all our clients right now. I love them all. I love the people. I love the products. I love the brands. I love the team. I love the story. I like, you know, I'm, I'm so lucky that I, you know, get to have that. And it's been intentional. It really has been intentional. And I have fired clients before. I had a team member who had just had a baby, who, by the way, was sending and answering emails, not even kidding you, an hour before she gave birth. She was in the hospital responding. And then she said, BRB, having a baby. I'm not even kidding you. This is millennials. This is like how they are. BRB, having a baby. And like 45 minutes later, she's like, hi, I'm back. I just pushed out a baby. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, you're crazy. Like, stop. She was so on it and she was incredible and got great results. And the client was very rude to her right after she delivered her baby. And I stood up for her and I said, that's unacceptable. This is what she has been doing for you. And we, you know, parted ways, but I just thought it's not worth it. And it was a brand I really loved and I'm super bummed that it had to end that way. This was a long time ago, probably four years ago. But um, yeah, I just, it was just crazy. Um, so they don't get to tell you also um, what services you offer, right? So if they want something and in your experience, your expertise, that's not how you would recommend they get the outcomes that they're looking for, you can say that. And they don't get to tell you, oh, by the way, this is my thinking on this one is like, well, I only wanna pay if I get results or I really only want a three month agreement or how to do your job. Exactly, that's crazy. Pop the baby and still working. Oh yeah. And honestly, Sasha, I kind of was like that too. I mean, especially the second one, it like, you know, it was a Friday and he came, you know, he came really fast. Like from the time I checked into the hospital to the time I gave birth was less than an hour with my second child. Um, the first one, out days, it was days. It was like labor at home, the whole thing. The second one's just like, here I am. Um, and so I'm like that too, but yeah. Oh, Serena. Yeah, Serena had a verbally abusive client and it sucks. But I think you probably have moved past that and realized parting ways was for the best and that had nothing to do with you. Serena, let me know if that's where we are now. And I think you knew that back then too, but it hurt. It sucks when you're in it, it sucks. Um, so that's number, oh my God, I'm only on three, you guys. Number three, stand up for yourself. Don't let clients walk all over you. Don't let them tell you how to run your business. Yes, absolutely, I knew it. Sasha, you're a superwoman, and I know that for a fact. Um, uh, yeah, and um, when they tell you like, oh, I really only want a three-month agreement, we talk about all of this in the Agency Accelerator, how to position your services, your pricing, knowing how much to charge, all of that. <laughs> so clients don't get to come and tell you this is how I want it because you're like, that's not how we do things. And by the way, you're starting with the outcomes that they're looking for. And if they tell you this is how I want to get that outcome and you know that that's not the right approach, 
you're the expert. So tell them, tell them that. Okay. Um, number four, uh, I would have stepped into my expertise a lot earlier. Building on the last one, you're the expert. And during the sales process, I want you to confidently showcase your expertise. Don't just focus on answering to what clients think they want. Ask them what their goals are, what they're looking to accomplish. And I tell them what I believe is the best approach and what the results are likely to be and in what time frame. And I'm very honest about it. I'm very honest. I just had a I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching client, Esther, and I was vo voxing. If you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, we do a call um, and work through things. We'll work through RFPs, which I don't love, but we can, we've worked on winning RFPs. We'll work on proposals, case studies, um, honing in your niche, whatever it is you're looking for. And then I do Voxer support. So I was voxing with Esther today and I actually sent a lead her way because she's the right person for the job. And the person that I referred to her, the expectations are crazy pants. Like, are you kidding me? This is not going to happen and you're crazy. And so I was just really proud of her hearing that she stood up for what she knows is reasonable and what to reasonably expect. And she has the experience to show him that she knows what she's talking about and she literally said if somebody tells you that what you're hoping for is possible and in that time frame that's a huge red flag so i love that during the sales process showcase your expertise don't just focus on answering the client's questions and what they think they want they have to answer what their goals are what they're looking to accomplish and then i tell them what the best approach is. Not that I'm giving them like a whole strategy, but I'm giving them like, this is how we approach it. And if a client tells you what approach to use, that doesn't mean you have to agree with them. And I feel like on the sales call, I'm actually adding value and I'm serving. Whether or not they come to work with me, I'm serving them by sharing my expertise in a valuable and genuine way that will add value and give them an understanding of what is reasonable and realistic, what they can expect. And you guys know in the Agency Accelerator and on these lives, we talk all the time about expectations not aligning with what's realistic, being the, uh, um, sorry, I have to, um, not being realistic. That's gonna set everyone up for disappointment and failed, you know, a failed campaign. And so you gotta step, <laughs> I love that this mom group is like, this is a group text because somehow I'm not in a group text. Um, she has to say this is a group text because apparently people were texting as if it was not a group text. Anyway, so I, Oh, instant fame. Yeah, that's exactly what this client was. It was an individual launching a book, wanted to be on New York Times bestseller list right away. Um, it was and on 100 podcasts before the launch, which was going to be beginning of January. Crazy. I mean, even if he recorded 100 podcasts, there's no way they'd all be produced and live before that. It was just like, and like top tier media. It was a lot. Anyway, so... You're serving them by sharing your expertise and what this ends up doing is giving your clients more confidence in choosing you because you know your stuff and you're proving it to them. I've had people leave our sales calls and they're like, I learned more in the last hour chatting with you than I learned trying to do this on our own in the last 18 months. And I'm like, yeah, because this is what we do all day long. We know the industry. And by the way, I teach a community or I get to support a community where we're constantly trying to provide the newest, the changes, what's happening in our industry. So we have to be on top of it. So step into your expertise. That's what I would have done sooner. Number five, I would have built my team or at least had less resistance to bringing on a team or bringing on a team member, my first one. I would have built my team at the beginning and I was super resistant 
to the idea of ending my solopreneur journey and building a team. <sighs> but once I brought on a team, I was able in the first year after having a team member, I was able to 3X our revenue. And I think back then, my biggest concern was giving away my potential income to pay for someone else. Give me a heart if that resonates. Because for me, I was leaving law where I was making, you know, I think 25 years old, 27, I think, 165 plus a bonus. And I was thinking that I wasn't successful in my new business if I wasn't making what I made in my old career. So I felt like giving away my income to pay for someone else um, meant that I was even farther away from my, I guess further away from my definition of success. Um, yes, I can still do everything. I tell myself, you can do, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. Isn't that the expression? You can do anything, but you can't do everything. The ability to leverage my team's time and actually make money on their results and free me up to do things that I love, focus on my zone of genius, the things that light me up instead of all the tedium inside the business. That was so worth that investment. Um, well, Francesca, my fear is not being able to provide the same level of service I am used to providing. That is a limiting belief that is keeping you stuck. You absolutely can. Think of all of the big firms. Think of companies that have multiple employees. You know, there are great people out there. Bye, Ashley. Good to see you. Um, hope baby's doing well. Uh, yeah, what's the, Tia, your fear is not being able to provide the same level of service that you're used to providing. Well, you're going to stay stuck. That's just the way it is. I mean, we talk all about this. And I talk about bringing on and hiring your dream team. Um, the other thing, you guys, Francesca, Tia, that you need to think about is your time and what it's worth. You know, your time is valuable. It's more valuable than some of the things you're doing, I promise you. With a team on my side for the execution, I can focus on how to grow the business and strategize ways to bring in more of my ideal clients. You can train, the other thing too, guys, is we have training for your team. And so they can go through our stuff. And I know there's a level of zhuzhing, right? Of like, this is the Tia approach. This is the Francesca approach. You can get a team up to speed 90% of the way with our training. It won't take you any time. Yeah, it's an investment, but you know, this is the pitch lab. They can learn how to do PR the, the right way from strategy, building a media list, pitching all the way through execution and leveraging. We will teach them and save you that time. Then you get to come in and add your little special flair. Or what if they do it 90% of the way and then you just do the 10% of awesome? It's already mostly done. There are great people out there. And you can build your business the right way with a team where you're focusing on the growth of your business, the overall growth and strategy and you know client services. So if I were starting my agency again, I'd be looking to add a team member as fast as possible. Think about that, you guys. Right away to support the business and the things that are not my strength and then be able to leverage their time to make more money and bring on more clients. And maybe in the first few months, it's a little bit of a loss, okay? Maybe, that's okay. It's all building a business, but that person is coming in to support you and they are gonna ultimately make your business a lot more money than if you tried to do it all on your own and you're gonna be less crazy. It's really hard to do everything on your own. Um, just in case anybody leaves, before I finish, I have two more. 
I'm gonna drop my link to my PR agency action plan. Super good, get it. It's the framework and I think it's a workbook. You get a workbook and the whole framework that I developed. It's my path to profitability framework. It's my framework. <laughs> Okay, this is what we teach to. This is the successful, like how you structure a successful agency. Yeah, it's not the only way, but it is a proven way and it works and it's worked for a lot of people that are on this call. And um, yeah, so grab that. That's totally free. Um, and it's a really good like resource kind of overview. Okay, so number six, I love this one. You know what? I think I'm gonna flip these two. I'm gonna say seven because I like the order better here. Okay. Number six, flipping six and seven is, I would start entering awards right away. You can't, it's like lotto. You gotta be in it to win it. Think about that. You can't win if you don't enter. You can't win if you don't submit. So you should be aware of the industry awards that your own agency is eligible for. And there are a lot of them out there and they're not expensive. They're like $800 and lower, probably closer to $495. Some of them are $295, whatever. But it is worth it for the credibility to be able to say you're an award-winning agency, which we are now. Um, and you should go for industry specific awards along with more general awards. Just throw your hat in the ring because your peers are doing it and you don't need to wait for something major to happen in your business. Just look at the criteria in the submission process and focus on answering that question. Not what you wanna say, but what they want to know. Position what you've done to answer that specific question. Position yourself, your results, your clients, your team, your wins, your growth, whatever it is in the best light. Give it your best shot. And you never know. I mean, you guys, this is like, I've got top women in PR. Oh, don't break. PR news, uh, mentor, gold, gold winner mentor you guys that's so cool right and all i did was submit all of the feedback we get from our community this one i'm really proud of inc best in business this was on my manifestation board you guys i'm not even kidding you i my whole computer screen is a vision board and right at the bottom is a cover of inc magazine I don't even know what it says. Can I see it here? Oh, what does it say? Um, the uh, ink with um, a woman on the cover. And I just started thinking about getting more visibility for myself. And we entered the ink Best in Business Awards and we won for silver winner, Profitable PR Pros with Jen Burson in the advertising and marketing category. You know the companies that are entering in advertising and marketing? If I would have ever thought you know, wow, well, we're small and we're new, you know, we're like a new business. How can we possibly compete with the big guys in advertising and marketing? But we did and we won. And that was awesome. And there's like a magazine around here. I almost threw it out. And I was like, oh, you know what? I never looked at this. And then I started thumbing through and I was like, oh, <laughs> we're in the magazine. I never saw it. It's just been sitting here. I'm cleaning my desk right now. It's been sitting here for possibly a year, I don't know. Anyway, start entering awards. Enter awards. There's Women in Communications, PR Week. There's a lot right now. Hold on, let me tell you because I have them open. Let me see. Some of them might be late. There's uh, PR Daily has top agencies. The deadline is tomorrow, okay? I am gonna link it because I hope you all apply. Um, top Women in Communications, uh, Communicators of the Year. There was another one too. I think um, like the Innovation Awards for Inc. Um, some of them extend extended the deadline. So just enter, you never know. You gotta be in it to win it. Okay, and then number seven is I would spend more time feeling present and enjoying the process. So I would focus on enjoying my business right where it is right now. 
and the stage that it's in. And I would enjoy every new phase and every new period of growth and every win. And I think I'm actually really good at this. I have a gratitude journal. Um, I'm currently, this is my, um, one of my little surprise and delights for members of my program because I think it's really important to do a gratitude practice and reflect, you know, on things that you're grateful for. And I talk a lot about my business and my clients and our client wins and my team and in my gratitude journal. Um, I still get so excited. We got an um, in style hit for a client yesterday. Was that what it was? I think in style. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, it's right here. Wasn't it? Oh, yes, in style. Best LED face masks of 2022 that will rejuvenate your complexion. So awesome. My team does that. And I'm leveraging that win. We give it to the client. We clip it. We share it. It's like our win, but the team did it. You know, I don't know if I would have gotten that on my own. Probably not because I wouldn't have been able to like focus on all of that and grow my business and teach this community. This is a lot that we do here. So when I first started my agency, I felt like I was on a journey to a specific destination or level of success. And I felt like I wouldn't be satisfied until I arrived at some abstract accomplishment in the future, like a certain number of clients or a certain dollar amount in revenue. Does that resonate with any of you guys? Give me a heart, thumbs up, comment, let me know. But if I could go back to the beginning, I would be more tuned in to enjoying every phase along the way and look at it all as part of the experience, heart, <laughs> uh, the experience of building a business, which to me is really exciting. Honestly, guys, I love building a business, being an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur more than being a publicist. I think that's a confession. <laughs> I just, that's why I love my program, the Agency Accelerator. I love teaching other people, this friggin' mosquito. I love teaching other people how to run a business. I love teaching people how to create, you know, financial abundance and flexibility and freedom. That's my measure of success. Uh, lead to landed, yes, madame, I shall. I think I got rid of it, but let me see if I can get it now. Um, so that's what's interesting and exciting to me is building the business. And let me share for Christine here. It's really good and it's seriously a no-brainer. It's like $47. I feel like maybe we need to charge more. Um, here you go. Lead to land it. Did I, did it go? There we go. Um, and we also have this out there in other places is like a 497 product and people buy it for that. Um, and then if people buy it for that much and they enroll in anything else, I just give them their money back and credit it towards our other programs. I just, yeah, I don't want anybody to feel like they didn't get the value, you know, but it is, I mean, it is worth that price anyway. So be present, enjoy the process of building your business. I think it's super exciting. And I would spend more time being present in my work, not always feeling like success was like this elusive place out there in the future. Like I had to work towards it. And it was like, success becomes a moving goalpost. <laughs> because if your goal is to make six figures and you make it, then you're gonna want multiple six figures seven figures if you want a five figure monthly retainer client and you get it you're going to want more than one so it's constantly like a moving goalpost a moving target and that can make you feel unsatisfied because you haven't achieved the ultimate thing but there is no ultimate thing it should be enjoying your business it should be building something that's your own. It should be building something that you love and you believe in it and you love going to work. I take five steps up to my office from my bedroom. My house is one of these like 
split levels, I guess. So my bedroom is on the like second and a half floor. So I go down to get my coffee and I come up to my office to start work. The five steps to my commute and I'm so happy every day. So happy to come and do it. I love Thursdays because I get to do this. I love Wednesdays because I coach. I love Tuesdays because I get to talk to clients and my Elevate uh, high performance coaching group. Um, I just love it. Like, I love it. I love connecting with all of you. I love connecting with clients. Like, I love it. And that's what I should have been seeking in the beginning was more presence in the work I was doing, not some future goal. Because you're like trying to get to the next, to the next, and the next. Thinking about my my career and my um, education, you know, I like did well in high school to get into a good college, and I did well in college to get into a good law school, and I did well in law school to get a great job and buy a house, and then I have to like work in this job that isn't the right fit and make all this money so that I can make partner, which then I was like, what the hell am I doing? I was just on this like hamster wheel without even stopping to think like, am I really even enjoying this? The answer was no, I wasn't enjoying it. And so, you know, be present in your work, enjoy it. Don't always feel like success of this is, is this elusive thing in the future. I think just deciding to do your own thing, starting a business, hanging your shingle, that's exciting. That's something to be in the moment and enjoy. Every little thing you do, like getting your headshots or signing up for G Suite and getting that email address or sending out your first client outreach email, all of those things are worth celebrating. Are you guys celebrating like the small things in your business? Tell me one thing this week or today that you are going to celebrate. Maybe you haven't thought about celebrating it. Tell me one thing you're going to celebrate in the comments. I want to know. What is worth celebrating? I took Lola for a very long walk. I told myself I was going to get up, schedule my live, just quickly respond to clients and hit the road and listen to a really inspiring podcast. And I took Lola for an hour long walk and I got my heart rate up. I got sweaty because it's hot out and then I put on a sweater I don't know why because it's cute um and I feel really good about that and I'm going to celebrate that because it feels awesome I got to spend time with the dog and be outside and I talked to neighbors and two prospects who reached out to me because of my reputation uh love it that's awesome and how are you going to celebrate Francesca could be anything could be getting a latte. It could be putting on a face mask and like just being in the moment, you know? I hope you guys are celebrating these small wins. So it's all part of the process. Be present in the moment and celebrate it. Nails! I'm doing my nails today too. I just got this color in an Allure Beauty box, but I've been kind of doing that like Hailey Bieber, like glazed donut look. Um, well, I never smell the rose, but today I got four press hits for a timely story about a bride who can't have her destination wedding. Oh no, due to the hurricane. My client canceled her grand opening to give the bride her venue. Oh, that's such a great story. Oh my God, will you link me to at least one of those hits? Tia, I wanna read, I wanna see that. That's awesome. And Serena secured the client we just brought back. Yes, um, that's awesome. That was the one that you were doing like an event um, with a leading industry publication. Tia, how are you celebrating? Francesca's doing nails or getting her nails done. Serena, how are you gonna celebrate? I wanna know. That's all awesome, you guys. You, you're crushing it. So be present. I don't know. You know what I want all of you to do right now? When Because I'm wrapping up. That's my seven. I'm going to recap my seven, and then I have a hot tip for you, okay? Pause. You have to stay until I'm finished to hear what I want you all to do. 
okay, if I were starting my agency over, what I would do now differently, um, what did you do? Uh, ooh, ooh, I celebrated with nail spa and a favorite bottle of wine. I love that you that you uh, celebrate your wins. This is awesome. I don't even need to tell you. You're like, we do this. Sent my client a gift to celebrate her mention in Insider. Boom. I love that. Okay, I'm going to read my seven recap and tell you what I want you guys to do. Number one, I would be more selective about the kinds of clients that I worked with and not be afraid to turn down opportunities that aren't the right fit, they're stepping stones in the wrong direction, doesn't serve me, doesn't interest me, not cool, not interesting, I don't care how much you're gonna pay me. I mean, yeah, there's a price for everything, let's be real. Um, and also if they're a pain in the ass and I have those red flags go up and I have an entire lesson on red flags in the agency accelerator that is like worth the price of admission because it will save you so much time and heartache. That's number one. Two, I would not get so stuck on branding. Just go, start doing the work, leverage those results and build your agency that way. Three, I, three, I would stand up for myself and not let clients walk all over me. They don't get to call the shots. Four, I would have stepped into my expertise a lot earlier, start serving clients on that sales call. Five, I would have built my team or at least had less resistance to bringing on a team at the beginning, right away, because that's when I had quantum growth in my business. Not like a percentage of one year to the next, three X and then another three X, it was like hockey stick, okay? Um, Number six, I flipped them, so I have to, I would start entering awards. I linked you to one industry award here. You guys should all enter. The deadline's tomorrow. Don't let that trip you up. Worth entering. We are the finalist in some award. Uh, Reagan's, like, um, the one that we already won. What is this one? So we're a final, so this one, we won, I think, in uh, 2020. Um, this is the best beauty, fashion, or lifestyle campaign. We are a finalist this year on another campaign. And they're like legit companies that we're up against. We were the gold winner in this one. Um, and there were some major companies. We were Nivea and Sally Beauty, and we won. <laughs> so I, we're up against some pretty fierce competition. So I don't know if we're going to win. But start entering awards. And number seven, I would spend more time feeling present, enjoying the process and not just have my eye on some future, you know, destination to success. And it, none of it was mattered, none of it mattered or was important until I got there. No, it is like these things you're celebrating. Um, you know, that, and Christine, I love this question. I'll get back to it in one second because I promise I would say this thing that I want you all to do. Okay, please do this. Please do this. I want you when I wrap, to start a note in your phone or your computer. If you have Apple, there's the Notes app. I hope you guys use it. It's really helpful to just have things, lists of things you're working on, lists of things you wanna keep track of, restaurants, movies you wanna see, shows you wanna watch, just put them all in there, right? Start a list that says ways that I celebrate. And I want you to think of things that you do that make you feel good, things that you enjoy, little ways you can celebrate, little to big, okay? It could be buy myself a new lipstick or, um, you know, uh, get a bottle of wine, um, go to the nail spa, get a manicure, pedicure, treat my mom to lunch. Um, it can be going to your favorite restaurant that's a special occasion or it could be trying a new place going to get drinks with a friend how do you celebrate do you get a massage do you take the afternoon off and go incognito and just like off the radar oh angela i love that sense of adventure one-way flights open-ended where are you going my husband always has to celebrate with a trip. Always. We just had our, do we have 16 years? Wait, let me think. 
15 years. Oh, yeah, 15 years. So we were supposed to go to Spain and Portugal in October in three weeks. And we canceled it because of something with his business. He's in the middle of a deal. He was more stressed about going than actually. So we're, we're changing it up. I'm going to take him planning a trip to Napa. But that's how we celebrate. Um, he has to go somewhere for any win. When he closes a deal, we take a trip. Um, last time we went to Big Sur and we went to the Post Ranch Inn. Talk about like that was a celebratory. It was also my birthday. So we combined him closing a deal and my birthday. And that was like a very like bucket list type of experience. Make your list on your phone. Keep it a running list. If you're doing something and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this. It's so enjoyable. I'm like really loving this. Put it on your list as a way to celebrate. It could be if you guys are into things, that's okay. Um, you know, treat yourself. Treat yourself. Which, by the way, we are watching Parks and Rec with our kids. It is so funny. It is so good. The characters are amazing. Our kids are totally getting it and laughing. I kind of had to tell them what sex was because there's a lot of sex talk. And we watched The Office. There's a lot of sex talk in The Office, which you don't notice when you're an adult. But when kids are watching, you're like, oh, my God. Um, but we love Tom Haber Haberford and Donna Meagle. Treat yourself. And so figure out what that is. Oh, my God. It's so funny. What is your way to treat yourself? Is it going out for ice cream or going to get gelato, going with your best friend to get drinks at a bar? Love the office, parks and rap. Love. My kids love it. Um, at first, they're like, this is so boring. It's a paper company. I'm like, just wait. Um, now they love the characters. We quote them all the time. It's so fun to have inside jokes with your kids. Like, they're super funny and they bring them up at the right times and you're like, hmm, a little sense of humor. So whatever that is, if you've been eyeing something special, give yourself a goal. Oh, another way I treated myself, I really wanted a large oversized print from Grey Malin. And there was a La Dolce Vita, the Sweet Life Italian um, Coast series that he does. And I wanted an oversized, it's an investment, it's like a piece of art. And um, my husband and I honeymooned in, uh, in uh, Cinque Terre, and there is one series that he has from um, Monterosso, which is, there's this picture of me overlooking this like rock and the ocean with the, the umbrellas and all the sunbathers. And Gray Malin has a oversized picture from that same vantage point where I was standing and that I really, really, really wanted that one. And so I set a goal for my business. And when I achieved that goal, I bought it for myself as a reward. And it wasn't like a huge goal. It was just a consi being consistent in the things I was doing in my business and, you know, purchase that. And now every time I see it, which is in my living room, I think of my honeymoon. I think of my um, celebrating my wins and please give me a heart or a thumbs up those of you who are still here oh there's quite a few of you here uh if you are going to create a how i celebrate list like acknowledging my wins being present maybe it's taking the afternoon and going for a hike you know or whatever it is that you enjoy maybe it's hiring a stylist or a a professional organizer for two hours to come in and create some system in your house something you know thumbs up <laughs> awesome everyone else yes oh look at okay i'm seeing them now and then when you don't know how to celebrate you just consult the list is this a little one like a manicure or is this like a trip to italy <laughs> like what are we talking about here um you know have it have it on there um, it's fun. It's great. Like taking friends to dinner is like, I love for my birthday, I'll take my friends to dinner and I love like treating people. Um, you know, just good flow of money and energy, things like that. So write that list on your phone. So you have it. Is there a meal you love? Is there a cheat? You know, I don't like this concept of cheat food, but like 
a little like sweet that you love or stopping in a bakery on your way home and getting a little treat for you and your family, you know, something. Or having Postmates delivered so you don't have to make dinner that night, right? Do that. Um, anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. My seven, what do you think? Good advice. Um, these were the seven things I'd do differently if I was starting my PR agency all over again. If you guys have any, please share them here. I'll stay on for a minute or two. Um, and Christine, some of my goals and vision when I started. So, um, certainly a financial goal, like I wanted to have the same or more income that I had as an attorney. Because for me, I was leaving a whole other career. Yay, awesome, excellent advice, thank you. You are so welcome, as always. Um, I had invested in my family you know, I'm so lucky and grateful. Love the idea of celebrating small things. Absolutely, that's what life is. And that's a way to get present. Maybe you buy yourself a new journal, you know? Just go on Amazon as a celebratory thing and buy a journal, buy a book you've been looking at, um, you know, something. Uh, sign up for Spotify so you have music with no ads or sign up for Hulu with no ads. Like something where you're like, I'm gonna make my life a little better. Just a little better, right? Like it's worth the $8 a month on Hulu to not have ads. My friends are like, we don't watch that on Hulu because there's ads. And I'm like, not, not on my Hulu because I don't want to sit through ads. My time is more valuable. I want ad free. So we pay an extra $8. I don't even know. It's worth it. Think of how to make your life just a little bit better. That's a way to celebrate. Something you've been putting off. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. I forgot. It's okay, whatever. Um, oh, so I was answering Christine's question about goals. I wanted to have a $5,000 a month client, and then I wanted to have a $10,000 a month client, and then I wanted a $15,000 a month client, and then, that's right, <laughs> and then I wanted to have a $25,000 a month client. You know, it's just, like I said, the goalpost always moves. Um, I set goals for the kinds of clients I wanted to have. I wanted to have a color cosmetics brand that had global distribution. That's what we won this award for, was that a campaign we did for that client. Um, I wanted a billion dollar client, and I've had three publicly traded companies. Um, now it's simple. I just want, well, my goals now and my vision, I want my agency to sustain. I want my team to be busy. I want it to make great money without making me crazy, which is where I am right now. Um, although we're, we're in a kind of a growth phase again where we need to ramp up our team. Um, I need someone like I've talked about finders, minders, and grinders. I need like the minder and finder role, basically like me plus I need somebody there. Um, but my goals and my vision are on the um, academy side. Big vision, big goals. Sometimes I'm like, is this even gonna be possible? But I'm betting on myself and I'll always bet on myself. Even if it's not successful, we'll iterate and I never let something that doesn't like go right away deter me from sticking with it. Because I just think about someone out there needs this thing that I'm creating and putting together. Somebody's life will be improved by having access to this thing that I'm building and this vision that I have. And I need to get it to that person. And that just drives me. So. Um, even if it doesn't go right away, I just keep at it until I figure out how to make it the thing that people want and need. So now I would say my goals and vision are my agency is just humming along really well, flowing nicely, and then, um, yeah, 100%. And focusing on Generation Academy, the edutech platform that we've developed, um, I have a financial goal there too. Um, 
I have a couple things cooking. So anyway, that's it. That's what I have for you guys. Thank you for being here the whole time. Promise me you're going to make yourself a how I celebrate my wins note on your phone or a post-it or add it in your journal wherever you look at things and access them. Get it out of your head. And then if something happens, maybe you say small win, medium win, large win. So if you have like a press win for a client, maybe that's a medium win and you choose from that category. Maybe you have a major win in your business and you land a five-figure monthly retainer client. That's a big win. That might mean a trip before you start working with them or three months in, you take a trip to get a little break because five-figure clients, a lot of work. Promise. Yes. Love it. Um, awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here. And Christine, I appreciate that question. Um, I hope that those of you who are interested in Lead to Landed sign up. It is a total no-brainer. Awesome. Congrats on all that you've accomplished. Thank you. It's scary thinking I may need help if I have a $10,000 client. Hire one and then not have enough business to keep them. Maybe start with a freelancer for a few hours a week and just go from there and see what they're able to do for you. And maybe because you have that help, you're able to sell your services to another $10,000 client. And now you have plenty of work and you have active pipeline that if one of them leaves, you know how to go back. What I look at is the results that I get in my business, not necessarily for clients, but for my business, every client that I've won, every new client I get, every time I've gone out, pounded the pavement and brought in a new client, to me is just evidence that I can do it and evidence of what's possible and what is possible for me. So, you know, I know that I can land a billion dollar client because I've done it three times. I know I can land a $25,000 client again because I've done it. Um, I know that if I lose a client, I can go out and tap my network and fill that vacancy. I don't always have the bandwidth on the agency side to do all of those things, nor is it necessarily a goal because I shifted my primary focus. So I'm not working in my agency as much as I work in the coaching business because we're building content all the time. It's very time consuming. But all of that is proof of what is possible because I've done it before. Angela, do lead to landed if you haven't. And then also we cover it in depth in the agency accelerator, filling your client pipeline. It's really, really good so that you don't have to struggle. You have a plan, you have a game plan, you know what to say, what to do. There, It's strategic. And sales, honestly, getting in new clients is like my strength. It's like probably the, the aspect um, that I'm strongest at. So it's one of my favorite things to teach. It's, it's good. So get lead to landed. It's like kind of a no brainer. Um, anyway, it's all possible. Um, love your business. So there you go. That's what I have for you guys today. This is a long one. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, take care. Let me know if you have any questions. Just pick up lead to landed. Oh yeah, it's great. You'll love it. I can't wait to hear Lily what you think. Um, and then of course I dropped uh, my, um, agency action plan here let me just drop it one more time a podcast on networking let me know um christine you can send us a message and tell us what exactly do you want to know about networking um because we can build out that content <laughs> okay thanks guys for being here i really appreciate all of you i love my thursdays getting to chat with all of you and do a training based on questions you have and what we think is important to know. I loved this topic. I loved it. I was like, ooh, I have more. Ooh, I have more. I have more. My team was like, what are three things? I'm like, I got more. Oh, I have another one. Oh, I have another one. So um, I hope you loved it too. Okay, go out, celebrate those wins, be present in your business. You're doing an amazing job, sweetie. You're crushing it. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys soon. Take care.